bless the Lord for enabling us to be here, to hear what he has to tell us. And we believe that God is going to speak to us in a mighty way. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you the honor. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to be here this hour to share your word. We pray that, God, you're going to speak to us in a special way. We commit ourselves to you that, Lord God Almighty, your word, you have a place in our spirits. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Take this opportunity to welcome all of us so that we can be blessed by the Lord. And we know that uh, the word of God enables us to continue on our Christian journey. So we will never tire to read the word, to reason to the word of God so that we can get strength to move on. Amen. Uh, the other time, last week, on our Thursday fellowship, we were looking at responding to God's great blessings, and we looked at uh, a number of them, and uh, we say that since God has given us such great blessings, then we have to ask ourselves how we are supposed to respond, what we are supposed to do. But before we come to that, we can remind ourselves briefly what we said. We say that uh, God has blessed us with uh, blessings. And one of them we said that we are chosen we are the erect of God. So we are not just the ordinary. We are so important in the eyes of our Father in heaven. We also say that we are the redeemed of the Lord. We are enjoying the forgiveness of our sins. We also said that we are adopted as sons. And we continue that said, if then we are sons, then we are also heirs. Amen. And uh, from that, God helped me also to realize that having such blessings requires us to respond in a certain way. And we are going to look at the book of First Peter, where we were, and we continue from verses 13. We read up to 17, and uh, we read verse 22, 25, and we continue from there as the Holy Spirit will read us. Amen. So let us go to the reading of the scriptures. So I hope you are all ready. Open with me, First Peter chapter 1, verses 13. And now we proceed from verses 13 to the verses that I'm going to read. <coughs> Sorry. Verses 13 says, Wherefore, guard up the ruins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 14 says, as obedient children, 
not fashioning yourselves according to the former rust in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Amen. 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Uh, let's move on to verses 22. Bible says, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and to unfeigned love of the brethren. I repeat, Seeing Ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and to unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. <clears throat> 24. For all fresh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falls away. 25, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached. Praise the name of the Lord. So one of the things that as believers we need to do is exactly what the Bible has told us to do. And Bible says that, verses 13, Guard up the ruins of your minds. Praise the name of the Lord. Guard up the ruins of your minds. I want us to start by looking at the meaning of the word guard. The word guard means to fasten or to bite or to encircle with a band or with a belt. Then we have the word ruins. They are part of your mind that is or that are loose. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Bible tells us that our mind needs to be acted upon because there is a part of our mind that if it is not addressed, it will make us not believe the word or act in accordance to the word of God. We will not be able to see things, situations and problems in accordance to the perspective of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible says that we guard up the ruins of our minds Amen. When we say that we fasten or we tie or we bite the ruins of our minds or this part of our mind that the Bible is calling ruins, it simply means that our mind needs to be addressed by the word of God. Amen. Now I want to give uh, an example so that we can clearly get what actually 
the writer of this word meant by, by guarding up the ruins of our minds. If uh, I was working in a place where there is water, maybe I was doing some cleaning and uh, I was putting on a garment that has loose ends. It would require me to tuck in the loose ends of the garment so that these parts of the garment will not interfere with the work that I am doing. By doing this, I'll be able to work effectively. I'll be able to do a thorough job. Imagine even if you are wearing a shirt with long sleeves. I see myself, or sometimes you find yourself folding the sleeves so that you are working comfortably. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible is telling us to do the same. The area of your mind that is negative, that is not seeing uh, the challenge that you are going through from the Bible, from the biblical perspective, it needs to be addressed with the word of God. You could be a student, for example, and you are going on at school and at a certain point in time, you find out that you have run out of cash. The person who was taking care of your school levies no longer can support you. If you are a believer, you are not supposed to depend on the part of your mind that is speaking negative, that is looking at the situation at that particular point in time. But you are supposed to address it using the word of God. You can use the word such as, though I do not have money, silver and gold belongs to my father. I will make it because my God is Jehovah Jireh and he is going to provide unto my needs. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not good to act from uh, the fear point of view because the word of God addresses fear and you are able to stand and to take charge of our mind. May the Lord help us that we will not depend on the part of our mind that is negative. Praise the name of the Lord. But as believers, we are going to think big. Praise the name of the Lord. Bible in the book of Proverbs says that as a man thinketh, so is he. That's why Peter was addressing the brethren. Hallelujah and telling them to guard up the ruins of their minds. He knew that it was likely that when you are faced with challenges, you listen to that part of your mind that is telling you you cannot make it, that is telling you that because you are born in a poor family, you remain poor, that is telling you because you are sick, and somebody uh, died of the disease that you are suffering from, that you too, you will follow suit to the grave. It is important to bind the ruins of our minds. It is important to grasp the word of God and address our minds with it and believe in our hearts that all that the Bible talks about us is true and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it will happen. Amen. To encourage us more, we can look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verses 23. You can take note of this scripture uh, and read it. I'll just quote it. It says that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Be renewed 
Depend on Christ, not on yourself. Have a new way of thinking that is in accordance to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And with that, you'll be able to move on. Hallelujah. The next item is that the Bible encourages us or tells us to be sober. As a believer, you and I need to be sober. Hallelujah. The word sober here means to be self-controlled. Amen. Be serious. Be strict. Those are the synonyms of being sober in this context of the Bible. Be sober, brethren. Be self-controlled is the meaning. Be serious. Be strict. The Lord is looking for serious Christians, born again believers who are serious, who know that they are saved, who know that they are going to heaven and they will not entertain any nonsense, anything. Hallelujah. That whatever comes your way, you will know where to take your stand as a believer. Praise the name of the Lord. Be a serious Christian. Hallelujah. Know the places where your feet or your legs are supposed to take you. Know the type of a company that you are supposed to join. Not people who will drag you back to the kingdom of the devil. And you know, brethren, when we believed Christ, we were supposed to move from there to continue growing in faith. And one of the things that has made some of us not to grow is lack of seriousness. You find yourself doing anything. You indulge in any business that is lack of seriousness. You are not strict. You are not, you do not have, you are not practicing discipline as a Christian. How is your work with the Lord? Hallelujah. You will need to ask ourselves as Christians, as a believer, what am I doing? How far, how deep have I grown in faith? And if I find that I'm simply where I began, then I need to look at my seriousness. I need to find out whether I am self-controlled or I am just entering any bus that comes my way. I am just behaving the way other women are behaving and those who are not born again. I'm behaving the way other youths, those who are not born again, what they are doing, I am not careful. I am careless with my walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God is calling us to be sober. We can further look at the meaning of this word sober by simply looking by those people who take alcohol, those who drink. A drunken man, how do they behave? You will see that when such a person is walking, they are not balanced. You find them staggering. Some of them cannot control the words of their mouth. They can say anything. You see, they cannot even make proper judgment because they are acting under the influence of alcohol. Brethren, Let's be careful so that you're not going to be spiritually intoxicated 
spiritually drunk by the things of this world by not controlling our behavior by compromising here and there if you are a christian that compromises it shows that you are spiritually intoxicated you are spiritually drunk so to speak hallelujah you will not be able to make the right decisions may the lord help us to be sober amen first peter 4 and 7 says just to add to this be sober watch unto prayer praise the name of the lord if you are not sober if you are acting like a drunken man you fight yourself sleeping anyhow those who drink they, they, they fight themselves sleeping they are affected by drowsiness so let us be sober so that we are able to watch even to watch and to prayer praise the name of the lord let us be serious christians a serious christian watches a serious christian prays a serious christian reads the word of god a serious christian joins the right company a company of women who are on their journey to heaven amen hallelujah Romans 12, 3 talks about and tells us something else about being sober. That we should not think, don't think more highly than you ought to. A sober person will not think more highly than they ought. Because if you think more highly, than you ought, then it shows that there is some pride that is controlling you. Even if you have been blessed with a gift, with the best gift, and you tend to think because you have the gift, now you are better than others. Bible is telling us that we should not think more highly than we should. Rather, we should know that every part of the body of Christ is important. Praise the name of the Lord. Be sober. Hallelujah. The same verse tells us to rest your hope fully upon the grace. That is verse 13. Amen. Rest your grace, rest, sorry, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought unto you at the, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Your hope need to rest fully upon the grace upon the grace that is to be brought when Jesus Christ will be revealed. This means at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want to pose a question. Because we are on our journey to heaven, will the Lord Jesus Christ find us ready? Praise the name of the Lord for the Lord to find us ready. Then we need to rest our hope fully upon the grace. It's only by grace. One singer sang and said, and the grace will read me home. He sings and says, amazing grace. Hallelujah. How sweet the sound. This grace will read us home. There is power in the grace. Grace is divine. It comes from God our Father. 
and it enables us to do great things, things that you feel left alone that you cannot do. Hallelujah. With the grace of God, we can do many things. This grace will read us home. This grace will make us to be fruitful in our walk with the Lord. It will help us to bear the fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. This grace will help us to remain established in the word of God. There is nothing that grace can't do. May we pray that God may give us grace to continue up until Jesus Christ is revealed. We pray that the grace of God will abound. That you'll be able to be sober. To watch and to prayer. Hallelujah. And even to guard the ruins of our minds. There is grace enough. All we need is to ask. And surely it shall be given unto us. Hallelujah. That ability to fight on the grace. There is a lot that we can say about the grace. Praise the name of the Lord. And as we continue, we find verses 14 telling us that as obedient children, we should not fashion ourselves according to the former lust of our ignorance. When we were not saved, when we were not born again, there are rest of the world that used to follow us. We were bound with the rest of the flesh. But the Bible encourages us instead of following the last, our former last, in our ignorance. That is the time that we did not know. We are encouraged to be holy. So the next thing that you are looking at is that we be holy. Why should we be holy? Bible says that as he is holy. Be ye holy. Verse 16 says because it is written be ye holy for I am holy. This is actually a quotation from the book of Leviticus. When the children of Israel were being addressed, they were told to be holy because God himself is holy. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What does the word holy mean? Holy means that you are blameless. The Lord cannot point at you and say you have done this or the other. It also means that you are set apart for his use. Set apart such that the Lord can use you in whatever way he would want to use us or he would want to use you. Amen. Be holy as he himself is holy. Being holy also tells us to abstain from sin when we are sinless. When we abstain from sin, we are going to be like him. And at this point in time, it is important to note that by our own, we cannot make it. Left alone, we can't be holy. But when we rely on him, when we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, we can remain holy. We can abstain from sin. When we are looking at the blessings of the Lord, we say that we are given the Holy Spirit as a deposit in our spirits. So the power of the Holy Spirit will help us to be holy. 
wapendwa the question that we can pose or that we can ask ourselves is do we have the holy spirit have we been baptized with the baptism of the holy spirit if we are not or as an individual because this is an area whereby you need to look at yourself as an individual have i been baptized with the holy spirit if the answer is no the best thing for us to do is to begin to desire you cannot receive what you are not desiring and brethren i feel i need to point out why many of us as believers we have stagnated we got born again but you're not moving on we are not even experiencing the gifts of the holy spirit that need to help us to serve the lord effectively we find ourselves being defeated today i am up tomorrow i am down struggling with sin it is simply because we have not experienced the baptism of the holy spirit and i'm encouraging every believer who is born again and is not filled with the holy spirit to desire because this is the promise jesus christ told his disciples when i ascend to heaven stay in jerusalem until you receive the helper who is the holy spirit mark you the disciples they had been with jesus they had been taught but they could not make it without the help of the holy spirit let us look at ourselves critically and challenge ourselves as individuals and ask ourselves surely since i got born again and not to this point in time why not today why don't i desire today and what you desire the lord will gladly give it unto you so for us to abstain from sin for us to overcome we need this power to work within us praise the name of the lord this is the only time we will find ourselves moving and growing from grace to grace from glory to glory or to the honor and of the glory of the lord and the glory of the lord amen hallelujah if you look in the far next verse verse 17 it tells us that we need to have fear to fear god to reverence him to revere him what does this mean it means to honor and respect god and this is not just the ordinary honor this is deep respect for god that you would not want to do anything that would hurt god anything that would not please god you will struggle you will uh, desire not to do it so brethren let us fear god let us walk in obedience unto him praise the name of the lord hallelujah when we fear god we will not take god for granted we will not take in casually we will not get used to the word of god but we will endeavor to obey to reason to the word of god with a desire to obey praise the name of the lord we move on we find something else that we should do 
in response to the great blessings. Hallelujah. In verses 22 of 1 Peter, as we had read, it tells us that we love one another deeply. Hallelujah. Faventry is the word that is used in the version that we are reading, King James Version. Love one another. Hallelujah. It is important to love one another. Love your brother. Love your sister. Love your neighbor. Praise the name of the Lord. Love one another. Hallelujah. To learn more of this, I would uh, ask us to take note of uh, this text from the book of First Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 3. It tells us about how important love is to an extent that it says that no matter what we do, even if we speak in tongues, even if we prophesy and do so many things that are recorded in this text, Bible says that I am nothing. Without love, brethren, we are nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, take note that when the Bible says that I am nothing without love, it simply means I am nothing. What is nothing? Nothing is nothing. It is zero. That is how serious not loving is. Whenever you find yourself not loving, call yourself nothing. You'd rather remember yourself zero. And zero times zero is zero. And zero minus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. May the Lord help us. Love is important. The Bible continues in the same chapter of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. And it explains in a very elaborate way what love is. What love is. That it is kind, it is patience. Not jealous. So if you find yourself being unkind, if you find yourself impatient, not patient with others, you find yourself with jealous, find yourself being rude, find yourself arrogant, uh -huh. then take note that you have no love. May the Lord help us. And it winds up by saying that love never ends. So let us cling, let us hold family unto, unto love because it never ends. The other things that we do, they will come to an end. Prophesying will come unto an end. But love never ends. May the Lord help us. May the Lord bless us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to finish by looking at what the Bible records in verses 24 to 25. 24 to 25. We can remind ourselves, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Grass withers, the flower 
falleth away. What does this mean? The illustration of grass with its flowers. It means that it is temporary. May the Lord help us and bless us for taking this word seriously. So that means that as grass, even the glory of man is as grass that withers and falls away. So the point we are driving us is that we should stop focusing on the temporary. The things that are not permanent, we should not focus on them. We should not pay attention to them. Rather, we should focus on the things that are permanent. What is this that is permanent? Let's look at it, verse 25. Bible records, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. That the word which we are reading, the word which is being spoken to you, endureth forever. It abides forever. It is permanent. So what should we focus on? What should, be, what should our special attention be? It should be on the word of God because it abides forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Take note of Colossians chapter 3, which you're not going to read. Just take note of it. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1, which says, Set your mind on things above. Hallelujah. Brethren, Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Everything on earth is temporal. Praise the name of the Lord. So, brethren, I want to believe that the Lord will help us to respond to the blessings by doing exactly what we have said and anything else that the Lord will help you as you do your Bible study. Praise the name of the Lord, that one you will guard up the rights of your minds. Hallelujah. Amen. And that you be sober. Glory to the name of the Lord, that you be sober. We will watch unto prayer. Hallelujah. And that you will love one another fervently. The other thing we have said is that you rest your hope fully upon the grace. Upon the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We've also said that we be holy as he who called us is holy. We will endeavor to fear God and we'll also love one another fervently. And finally, we've also said that you focus not on the temporary things, but on the permanent. May the Lord so richly bless you and I as we continue waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for helping us, Lord, to share your word. We thank you, Lord, for your grace in the sharing of the word. Thank you for all of us that have risen to your word. Heavenly Father, we pray that you help us to pay special attention to your word and to practice it on our daily lives so that our lives will be changed. Thank you, Jesus. Be with us. We pray this believing and trusting in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>